Blow Friday Sports Show here on your Colour of Country Life, Flow FM. Time to go into the Riverina and talk some Hume netball with our correspondent, Amy Riley. Lovely to have you back with us, Amy. How are you getting on? I'm great, Ellis. It's always a pleasure. That it most certainly is. It's always a pleasure for us to uh, have really, really good correspondence on the airwaves such as yourself. And let's start with Ospin uh, in their game against the Saints last weekend. Pretty comfortable day out, I suppose. Everyone knew that uh, it would be a foregone conclusion that the home side would win. But uh, maybe the uh, jury was out as to how competitive the Saints would be, certainly didn't disgrace themselves. Absolutely. It was a great game for Osborne against a really, really determined and accurate in goals BB Saints. Saints will be really pleased with their ability to start putting together some consistent netball and look to build on this first four full quarters. Osborne continuing to prove their strength each week and will be really pleased with their efforts throughout the start of the season. Osborne's best on were Emily McPherson and Sophie Edmonds and Saints was Lane Grappara. I'm really liking the look of Lockhart. They're uh, just going about their business, aren't they? Just uh, not quite on everyone one's radar just yet but um or maybe they are we'll, we'll get your commentary on that in a second but uh, their win against the Murray Magpies 54 to 38 they keep getting the job done well and truly on everyone's radar now strong win for Lockhart Magpies made them work extremely hard for that win Magpies will be really pleased with their efforts against a team who's hovering around the top spots of the ladder and will look to build into finals and it was a big game for Lockhart supporting their coach back on her 400th A grade game so it'll be a win for them to be proud of but Magpies will be really pleased with their efforts and the scoreline given their new look and young team. Lockhart's best on were Tegan Hannon and Magpies was Ash Patel and Tanisha Leach, both strong in goals. CDH for you chasing their shadows against Jindra. It was always going to be a tough assignment for them on the road, Amy. Big win by Jindra against CDH for you. CD are remaining really positive and continue to build their team despite a tough start to their season. Power's young guns showed their speed and were accurate in goals. But Timber's, sorry, Jindra's tall timber made it very difficult for them down that end and across the court. Jindra's best on were Millie Fawcett, Chelsea Burns and Maggie Thompson. And CDHBU was Kirsty Schultz, Tegan Hicks and Grace Gillard. Jindra's tall timber, a bit of a mouthful, that one. Uh, Col- Col- Can they are a side that are still coming together. We know that. It might take them a year or two, especially with results like this. 23-60, to 60, Billabong Crows getting that win on the road. Pretty easy day out for the away side. For sure. It was a great win for Billabong Crows against Colcan, who are showing great determination and skill across each game, regardless of the scoreline, and staying positive with a tough start to the season. Crows will be really pleased with their strong scoreline and a solid four-quarter effort for their team across the whole court. They'll be looking to get some good wins on the board throughout the season to make a run at final. BB Crows' best on were Bethany Maloney and Isabel Bush. We said how long and Holbrook could be a close game and it was of sorts. Not a whole lot in it, but how long too good at home? 47 to 35. A slender ish sort of margin in the end. It's what uh, a lot of people would have wanted to see going out there as neutrals. Really tough game for both sides. The margin was anywhere between four and seven throughout the game until the last quarter. Spiders were very consistent with minimal errors and led throughout the game, but Holbrook battled it out. How long got an early jump on them and they just couldn't quite claw that back, but certainly nothing to be displeased about by either of the sides and we expect them both to go deep in, into the season. A great win for how long, again, on a really important odd sox day for mental health for them. Holbrook's best on were Ness Taylor, Ollie Shaw, Amy Platt and Maddie Black and how longs were Nicola Lane and Abby Lishke. And I think we can now officially say that the Henty girls are having a party 34-28, they won on the road against the Giants here. Amy, how did you see that result? A great win for Henty against Giants, who've proved themselves to be a force this season already. Certainly the Henty team and the entire community is up and about at the moment with how well their netball is doing. The club vibe is fantastic. The entire game was a two to three goal margin with that being extended in the last five minutes. And it was a really tough defensive battle the whole game. So close game, a good confidence boost for Henty and also a really good game for Giants. Certainly nothing for them to scoff at either. They're well and truly in the race to finals and I'm sure they took lots of lessons out of it. Henty's best on were Olivia Hall and Chelsea Wetton and Giants was Izzy 
Chris Berger. All right, let's take a look at how the ladder's shaping in this magnificent competition. Four games in, Ginger atop, top, Lockhart second, Osborne third, Henty fourth, Billabong, Crows fifth, Giants sixth, Holbrook seventh, Howlong eighth, Saints in ninth, the Billabong, Brockles, Brocklesby, Brown Buttock, Saints, Murray Magpies, 10th, Colcan, 11th, and CDHBU in 12th. Amy, the big question, is there no longer a breakaway big two? Is it a big three now? I certainly think throughout the whole season, we'll see lots of movement throughout that ladder. And if the last couple of weeks have shown anything, it's that any of the teams are capable of knocking off each other at the moment in that top six, top eight area. I think there are a few that are a little bit further behind, but I certainly think because they are so new throughout the season, if they can get it together and get moving as a team, they're certainly capable of taking on anyone as well. And they've started showing that being a lot more competitive. It's anyone's game, really. I mean, it's a long season, and I expect that that battle for the top six will be really tight. To this weekend's fixtures, firstly, let's talk City HBU. They'll have a hard assignment at home against How Long, but uh, a good chance for them to bounce back and be competitive. Certainly. How Long coming off a really good win. CDHU have had a tough start to the season. We'd love to see them get a win on the board and get some confidence for the girls going. And I know that they're remaining really positive, but I do think How Long will get this one. Seems like we've got a, a couple of potential games of the round this week. One of them will have to be Holbrook in their assignment against Osborne. This could be a close game. Absolutely, it will be. This will be a great game. Holbrook has shown themselves over the last couple of years to be up and coming. They've really hit their straps this year. I thought about this one for a while. I think I'm going to go Osborne because they have such accurate and strong shooters, but I expect it to be tight. Crows, Giants taking place in Urana. Who do you like? This is another one that I thought about for a little bit. I'm going Crows at the moment, but if Giants get up and about, I wouldn't be surprised if they knock off Crows. All right. One of the other games of the round, surely, is the battle of the two uprisers in Henty and Lockhart. This one will be played in Henty, so does that give them a narrow advantage here, Amy? Yeah, this is, again, another one where you don't really know who it's going to be, do you? We haven't seen Henty... At their strongest, I don't think. I think they've still got a little bit more to go. I'm tipping Lockhart because I know that they're coming off the back of some really good wins, as are Henty. I think Lockhart might have a bit more experience and it might give them the edge. In Barambuttick, we have the Saints up against Jindera. A chance for the home side to put some pressure on the ladder leaders. I expect that Jindra will win this game, but given the performances that BB Saints have been putting out recently, I don't think that it'll be a blowout, and I would be very surprised if it's not a tough battle. Finally, Colcan travel to the home of the Murray Magpies. I can only see it being a Magpies win, this one, Amy. Yes, again, Colcan has been building really nicely, and as have Magpies, they've both got very new, very young teams. I think Magpies, like you mentioned, will get the win, but again, another one that could go either way on the day, depending how everyone's playing, because they're both still getting used to their sides. So a really exciting round, this one, actually. You bet, and we look forward to unbundling it all with you next week when we chat again. That's Amy Riley, our correspondent out of the Hume Netball competition in the Riverina. All the best with uh, the weekend's netball, Amy. Enjoy the action. We'll speak to you next week. Thanks, Alice. I look forward to catching up.